Welcome, this is Automotive Anonymous, and I'm so glad you're here. That's the all new 2024 Chevy Silverado High Country. It's one of the best new trucks you can buy while simultaneously having a couple of issues and things that I wish GM would have done better on. There's a reason why though, over half a million people buy these every single year in North America. And today I get to review this sterling gray metallic high country for you. So we'll do a walk around, go through all the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 with a GPS, and then my final thoughts to help you decide what do you do with the all new high country and big thanks to Twin Falls Chevy for letting me borrow theirs for the day. Let's dive right in with this review. If you're new to trucks, the Chevy Silverado nameplate actually came out with the first generation back in 1999. This one, however, is part of the fourth generation that came out in 2019. So this 2024 model year is actually the sixth year of this current generation. It had a refresh front end and a few other updates since 2022. But overall, that's a pretty proven, pretty reliable platform. A base Silverado, of which there are nine trim levels, so the lowest one being the work truck, starts at about $37,000. Whereas a base high country could start about as low as $66,000. But the way this one is specced with all of its extra goodies and options and destination fee, it's closer to seventy-five dollars These are a full-size truck body, but they have a medium-sized or half-ton frame sitting underneath. And if you live in the United States, these are homegrown because they're made and assembled in Indiana, Michigan, or Ohio. They're a five-star crash test rated vehicle, and they have a lot of safety features, especially that are standard when you get up to the highest trim levels, such as this or a ZR2. There are literally dozens of configurations for how you design or order your Silverado, but something like this that's a crew cab short bed, it's about 19 feet long, seven feet wide, five and a half feet tall, it has a 12 foot wheelbase, so it's pretty planted on the road. They weigh roughly 5,000 pounds. And then the way this one sits, it has a max payload capacity of around 1,600 pounds. So that's how many pounds worth of people and stuff you can put in your Silverado. So pick conservatively who or what you're gonna bring with you. Silverado, if it's configured correctly, can tow a maximum of about 13,000 pounds without going to a heavy duty chassis. And this can do a full circle in 46 feet. Gas tank is located on the driver's side. It's a 24 gallon tank. So if you're getting 15 city up to 20 highway, you could be road tripping for about 480 miles before you run out of gas and have to walk to the gas station or call AAA as a Bridgestone all-terrain tire. That's a 275, 60, 20. These do have a full size spare underneath, but it's not a full size rim. It's actually a 17 inch wheel on that. And then leave the key in your pocket because you have proximity key features. But if you do want to use the key, you have lock, unlock, remote start, tailgate, lift and lower, and the panic button to alert people that you need help. Otherwise, there's your proximity key feature to lock and unlock the vehicle. If that electronic running board isn't the red carpet rollout, I don't know what is. Otherwise, the door panel looks really nice. You have wood trim, high country stamped in, nice big six finger handle, soft touch armrest, all the buttons, controls, and Bose speakers that you could ask for with a full-size door pocket. High country on the door sill. Really nice rubberized and cloth mats, rubberized pedals, OBD2 port hood release. All of your extra electronic parking brake, 4x4 lighting and more lighting options. Heads up display options. Windshield washer options. Options, electronic steering wheel adjustment. 10-way power leather seat. Heated, ventilated, high country stamped in, and moonroof up top. Sitting inside the high country is a really nice place to be. Very human centric, ergonomically pleasing, and so many higher end luxurious materials. It even says high country on the door. But let's fire it up with the push button start. The 12 and 13 inch screen come to life. The heated leather wrapped wheel feels really good. You have all of your adaptive cruise settings on the left, voice and volume on the right, the toggle switch to go through the center screen. The horn sounds pretty good. And then you have paddle shifters on the back for your 10 speeds. That's connected to this big 6.2 liter V8. I do like that you have the six o'clock handle because it's a truck, you really should have that on every truck produced. Otherwise, the 13 inch screen is pretty good. One of my favorite features though is the camera clarity that you get when you go Silverado. In my opinion, these are almost as good as a Tesla and a lot better than most of the competition 360 degree cameras. Otherwise, you have all of your extra fancy features right there. You can drop all four windows when someone lets out a stinky. That keeps relationships alive. 
And then you have your trailer brake, your physical buttons, ventilated and heated seats, and I like that they kept climate controls the way that they should be. USB, USC, storage. Storage, basically some avioli, those air-filled sacks. They can hold a small bottle, a 16 ounce in place, or something bigger could easily fit in there. And then you have your gear select. Keep in mind when you wanna go into park, you gotta push park. Don't just try to jump out of the vehicle before you do that. More storage, wireless charging, nice big center console with a lifty tray, and a few more plugins in a household style outlet. Up top, you have your rear view camera mirror and all of your controls for your home garage doors and to open up the rear and the power moonroof. I do wish the power moonroof was a little bit bigger on this high country. It's basically the size of a sedan. But with that said, let's turn it off. Let's hop in the back and see what else it has to offer. The door panel follows the same theme. You still have the wood trim, kind of a blued dark interior handle giant snack holder with your bottle and your speaker they do a really good job this is the 60 split on the bench it's pretty easy to lift pretty easy to lower and you have your tire changing tools down there you also have the hidden storage which i appreciate otherwise you have a b pillar grab handle and sitting behind myself at 5 foot 11 i have that much room in front of my knees plenty of room to stretch out my chacos which i know you guys love map pocket cup holders, ventilation, heated seats, and plugins, and center armrest. Seriously though, why is that not rotated so, so you could fit your arm? And you could still have your cup holders down the center. Otherwise, it's extremely spacious. It feels like a living room in here. And let's hop out so I can show you the, the tailgate. The tailgates look really good on these. Chevy doesn't let you forget that you're driving something fancy. Although I'd probably get some black vinyl to fill in the Chevrolet on the back. Otherwise, it's easy to lower the tailgate either through the remote or through the button by the cameras. And then it's already lined. You can see High Country is stamped in the back. It looks really nice, those little touches. And then three tie downs on each end, each rated for 500 pounds. You, of course, have the LED lighting and then the household style outlet on this configuration. Otherwise, the tailgate's easy to lift, but you might as well let the, let the little electric motor do its thing. The passenger side door panel follows the same theme and design language. No new surprises back here. It's just really well designed. And then you have another map pocket for another backseat driver. This is the 40 split. It lifts even easier than the 60 split. And then there is your jack under there. You can also see that there's cutouts for rear passenger headroom, which just adds to the living room amount of space back here. If you get a ride shotgun, you're really in for a treat. Not only do you have wood trim all to yourself, high country stamped on, and a Bose speaker, but you have a ginormous bottle and snack holder. Of course, the running board comes out for you as it does for all the doors. High country on the door sill, and then really nice mats, just like you saw on the driver's side. 10-way power adjustment, heated and ventilated seats, our backpack safe, having a good time. High country is stamped into the headrest, which looks really good. More wood trim storage, hidden wood trim storage, locking storage, and it's actually pretty adequately sized in here. Otherwise, let's come around to the front. I wanna pop the hood and show you what the 6.2 liter Ecotec engine looks like. Under the hood is the 6.2 liter Ecotec. It's mated to a 10 speed automatic. That's a really stout power plant. 420 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 460 pound-feet of the good stuff at 4,400 RPM. These have traditionally been really reliable, really good engines because they're pushrod, they're simple, and they make a lot of low-end torque. Although in recent years, with all the active fuel management systems that these have been given, these in the 5.3 Ecotex, some of them have had worse reliability because of how that prematurely wears the engine, but I'll let you read about that on the forums. Overall, it's a really good design. Everything's easy to identify, all of your reservoirs throughout, the filter, the baffling, the upper intake manifold, the oil dipstick, everything you can pretty well sort out and find. But if you're under seven feet tall, you might need a step stool to get up here because it is pretty high up being such a big truck. Time for one of my favorite parts. I get a time travel and teleport you to one of my favorite roads to show you how it drives and how fast it is. Initial driving impressions of the high country. So there's a lot of body roll. Although no more than a typical big full-size pickup truck. Visibility is fantastic in the high country. You can fit full-size adults in the back seat. 
The backpack's having a good time, being held in well, knowing it's in a five-star crash test rated vehicle with a plethora of safety features and a really cool heads-up display. And it's just nice and comfortable in here. The Bose speakers sound good. Having the 360 camera run while I drive, I think it's just amusing. And when you have to get on the gas, 460 pound-feet of torque, feels really good, puts you back in your seat. You're gonna see with our zero to 60 pretty soon though, we're at quite a bit of altitude, so it is down on power, but still very impressive. Honestly, you have a good time driving the high country. It feels really good. It feels really stable on the road with about a 12 foot wheelbase. Just make sure that you don't have to take corners too quickly or change direction too quickly. Because look at all this body roll. It really rolls quite a bit. But then it goes back to being very stable, very comfortable, very composed. And there's not a lot of wind and road noise, although there's, you know, the road run is pretty decently paved and the trees aren't dancing around too much today. But in general, Silverados, especially the upper trim levels like this, do a good job. Overall, I think this is a really good vehicle, a really good bargain because it's one of the nicest interiors that I've ever been in. And I've been in several cars over $100,000. So this full-size truck with the big Ecotec engine you want for about 75, yeah, that sounds about right for the year 2024. But what are your thoughts, guys? Have you driven one? Are you considering it? Which trim level? I wanna know, so comment below. Otherwise, I need to get to the private road and I need to show you how fast this is. Traction off, brake rev, four auto launch. True zero to 60 came in at 6.68 seconds, which is honestly really impressive if you look at the graph. Density altitude is almost 6,000 feet, so this big 6.2 liter V8 is actually down in power, almost 18%. Let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts of the 2024 Silverado High Country is it's a lot of truck, and with that comes a lot of asking price. Almost 75 grand for one of these, but it offers you a lot. It has a lot of safety features. It's a five-star crash test rated vehicle. It has a lot of tech, a lot of creature comforts, a lot of performance with that big Ecotec engine, and a lot of capability being a body on frame, full-size truck. So what are your thoughts, guys? Are you gonna consider one of these? Have you owned one? Do you want to own one? If not this one, what trim level are you looking at? I always have liked the 6.2s. This has been my favorite Silverado to drive as far as comfort is concerned. I do think if you're gonna buy one of these, maybe get some different wheels than factory. Maybe tint the windows, do the basics that set your truck apart from the rest of these. Because again, oh yeah, there are half a million of these sold every year in the United States and about half as many of those additionally as the Sierra counterpart. So let me know in the comments what you're thinking. Definitely test drive one before you order one. Like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you wanna watch more. And otherwise, take care until the next one.